Hi everybody, and welcome back to the Times Ticking channel. I'm your host, Jake, as per usual, and today I'm excited to share with you some of the most fascinating and awe-striking timepieces from this year's Watches and Wonders. So stick with me through this intro, and we'll take a look at some of the most innovative wristwear this generation has to offer. It's good to be back. This sentiment, uttered by Fratello founder Robert Jan Brower, more than matched the enthusiasm coursing through the halls throughout all seven days of this year's long-awaited Watches and Wonders show. Watches, for me, are an emotional product, so it's very good that it's a physical show again. It's all about people connecting, Brower added. After more than two years, the hallmark event organized by the Fondation de la Haute Horlagerie once again threw open its doors to 38 major and independent brands, buyers, and journalists. And for the first time in its 31-year history, showrunners simultaneously delivered free, premium content to an online global audience in a truly digital experience. Saving the Planet took center stage at the show, with most brands showcasing their latest sustainability efforts. Oris introduced its Aquas Date Up Cycle, the newest version of its high-performance dive watch with a dial entirely made of recycled PET plastic picked up from oceanside beaches. Panerai launched the submersible Quaranta Quattro with their proprietary e-steel, a stainless that is 95% recycled. Chapar highlighted its continuing commitment to fair mining practices with its Happy Sport Chrono, fully encased in 18K ethical rose gold. Hublot also solidified its commitment to the environment by announcing a collaboration with Jean-Louis Etienne's Polar Pod Expedition. The Polar Pod, a zero-emission, 100-meter-long vertical vessel, is the first ship to conduct large-scale research in Antarctica's waters. The uncrewed, engineless vessel will drift around the continent powered by onboard wind turbines and the Antarctic circumpolar current, and collect valuable data. The project is part of Hublot's Explorations Program, which supports various environmental projects worldwide focused on three main areas, space, earth, and sea. Meanwhile, Tag Heuer introduced the Carrera Plasma in its Diamant de Vantgarde collection. The Turbion watch possesses a unique polycrystalline diamond dial, covered with a single lab-grown CVD diamond. Although grown in a lab, CVD gems are real diamonds, and using them represents another step towards protecting the earth from overmining. Our vision was to create a never-before-seen watch, said Tag Heuer CEO Frederick Arnault in his keynote at the show. Lab-grown diamonds allowed us to create shapes and textures that would be impossible to have with natural diamonds," he continued. One of the most unofficial themes of this year's watch show seemed to center on our innate desire to explore the world. Maybe it's because we have been cooped up for so long, who knows. But while everybody was camped out in their living rooms, several of the brands dreamed up some fantastic timepieces that beckon you to get on the boat, in the air, or on the trail. Mont Blanc immediately caught the attention of our Swiss-trained watch repair technicians with the 1858 Iced Sea Automatic Date and the limited edition 1858 Geosphere Chronograph Zero Oxygen. Both the Iced Sea and the Zero Oxygen sport a stunning glacier dial that looks exactly like the real thing. On the case back of the Iced Sea, watch lovers will discover an incredibly detailed underwater and above-water engraving of a massive iceberg. If you look closely, you can even see the tiny deep sea diver. Watchmakers also lubricated the movement with special oils that work well in frigid temperatures up to negative 50 degrees Celsius. Purchasing the zero oxygen won't be easy, as only a few have been made. But if you tune into the climbing world next month, you will see it on the wrist of world-renowned mountaineer Nimzdai Persia, MBE, member of the Order of the British Empire. In May, Perja will give the timepiece the ultimate road test by attempting to summit Mount Everest without using supplemental oxygen. A couple of watches that inspired a bit of travel whimsy at the show were the Arnold & Son Perpetual Moon 38 Eclipse 1, Patek Philippe's World Time Reference 7130R, and the Hermes Archeo Le Temps Voyager. The Perpetual Moon evokes Van Gogh's Starry Night with its blue and white mother-of-pearl backdrop, 
a fine layer of blue aventurine crystal, and a lace-like cutout that highlights different phase ruthenium crystal moons as they pass by. Diamonds placed throughout the watch case add to the feeling that you're sitting somewhere under a billion stars. Created just for ladies, Patek Philippe's World Time Ultra Thin Self-Winding 740 Caliber Movement allows the wearer to simultaneously see the correct time in 24 different time zones and adjust to a new time zone with the touch of a button. The watch highlights the brand's craftsmanship with its hand gloshed basket weave center dial, sapphire crystal case back, and bezel with 62 diamonds. Finally, one of our personal favorites, the Hermes Accu Le Temps Voyager. As watch lovers and Hermes watch repair gurus, we love a good complication, and this timepiece does not disappoint. The watch's latest offering in the Accu line features an exclusive time traveling module, a floating central dial that you can easily set to any time zone. And unlike many world time telling complications, the Accu Le Temps Voyager also is surprisingly easy to read at a glance. The timepiece shows your home hour on a 24 hour scale in a small aperture at the 12 o'clock position, while the rotating center disc displays the time where you're at with the traditional hour and minute hands. A tiny red triangle at the edge of the dial points to the city name within your current time zone. The design is impressive too. Harkening back to Ermi's roots and all things horses, the watch face displays the Planisphere de un monde equestrie motif designed by Jerome Colliard, a unique globe with equestrian named continents. The galvanized center disc also maintains the original 1978 RQ dial design with its simple face and sunburst type numerals. At 41mm in black and 38mm in blue, this watch wears nicely on any wrist. So, what were your favorite watches in this year's Watches and Wonders show? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.